we have brand new cards that have been revealed from Madness at the Dark Moon Fair. You nailed it. You got it. You got it that time. Uh, so I'm really excited about some of these cards. That, like, we don't have very many. We're still at the, like... I think we got nine before the show recording today, starting with reveals yesterday. But this is going to be a super intense reveal season because all the cards are going to be revealed by the 12th. That's next week. We get like one week of card reveals and then it's just going to be like splah, all of them. Yeah, it's, it's already it's already the fourth. So if it's by the 12th, that's literally a week, well, eight days. But still, it's I mean, it's, you know, you're gonna be able to go on the client and see all the cards and just. Oh, it's gonna they're gonna come so fast and so hard. And there's some there's some crazy ones today for sure. There definitely are. Starting with okay, I wanna start with Demon Hunter. Uh so I'm gonna go totally out of order from if you guys are watching the video right now. But um the first one I wanna talk about is Ilganoth because okay, Ilganoth has been a boss in WoW in WoW raids. He's very old gaudy, he does the whole whispers thing very much with the whole prediction of the future and everything else. And then I saw his Hearthstone card and I'm like, wait, what? Reverse lifesteal? <laughs> this is crazy. So Ilganoth is a, a Demon Hunter legendary. He's a four mana two six with lifesteal, except it says your lifesteal damages the enemy hero instead of healing you. So like this seems like it he's almost deserving of a new keyword, right? Except that this is obviously the only iteration of the effect that we know of so far. But like, I saw this and it just blew my mind. I was like, wait, no, that's not how lifesteal works. <laughs> yeah, dude, reverse lifesteal. Like there's there's stuff in the game that, um, I don't remember the card name. I just played against it um, where you play the minion and then whenever it takes damage, you take that much damage or you take double damage. I'm not exactly sure. But someone played Silas Dark Moon and then it rotated. They gave me that card and then uh. they shield slammed it and did a bunch of damage to me. I'm like, whoa, this is crazy. So I think it's cool that they're experimenting with stuff like this. Um, to me, I see this and this just seems like an OTK card. I feel like there's some way to make this work. Obviously, you know, I'm no deck builder, so I have no idea. But <laughs> it, to, to me, that just seems this just seems like it's going to be uh going to be otk potential somehow yeah um, it seems like because the lifesteal cards that are currently in the game because that's how i read this is that your lifesteal so if you have any effects that lifesteal then you would like deal the damage with your card or your weapon or your minion or whatever and anything that reads lifesteal would then also damage would would then like damage the enemy hero instead of healing you so you're right there's a lot of design in the lifesteal space that isn't broken because you're just kind of like you're dealing damage to one place and you're healing up your hero's face, which, you know, you can't go over 30. So there hasn't been a whole lot of like damage or not damage, uh, balance issues with lifesteal in general. But if you suddenly turn lifesteal and all of those like just numbers printed on cards and all of a sudden those are damage spells and you know double damage weapons and because that's basically it if i'm swinging with like a four damage weapon into your face i'm gonna do eight damage because it's four from the weapon and then four from the lifesteal that seems like too much <laughs> yeah that's that's pretty nuts i mean what's the especially most especially in damage? demon hunter right like <laughs> yeah what's the most damage you've taken from the the lifesteal weapon like they they you know it's a four two and yeah, then they just I feel pump like it, it up. usually hits me for at least eight if not more i mean most damage i've probably been hit for like 20 which yeah, then there, <laughs> there you go yeah, with then, the otk thing right like they, they do they do the lapidary and that gives it plus five and then they give uh you know the those twin slices twin slice. oh. yeah and then <laughs> so they're hitting you for for x amount say a 10 bajillion. and then lifesteal 10 so that's a 20 damage life swing. Yeah, like that's that's crazy. Like, I don't know. This is this is this is a scary card. Uh, I, mean, I think it's going to be at least you're good. missing out on the like healing. So it's not a full swing. Like if it, if you could like deal 20 and also heal 20, that would be just way over the top. At least you're not getting that like heal on the back swing. But I mean, if you're hitting face, you're not taking damage anyways. So <laughs> 
This yeah. just seems uh. to slot too easily into the existing Demon Hunter kit in a way that's like maybe game breaking again. <laughs> Yeah, it's 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 gonna be good. I mean, Demon Hunter is already really good. They they play the Soul Soul Shard Demon Hunter. Mm-hmm. I think it's, I, I think it, I'm pretty sure it's a tier one deck. I know it's a you know tournament deck, and uh, it's it's a it's really good. And uh, this card definitely goes in that. I think. Yeah, I think so too. I mean, the only saving grace here is it's a legendary, so at least you know they have to draw it right. <laughs> There's only yeah, one yeah. copy. Yeah, and Demon Hunters have a problem drawing cards, right? Oh, yeah, yeah. No, it's really hard for them to get to the (laughs) bottom of their deck. So, you know, you'll probably never see this. Sarcasm. But, yeah. (laughs) So, uh, we saw a couple of other Demon Hunter cards as well. So, uh, they got a seven-mana spell called Expendable Performers, which is the card art on this is basically like a trapeze artist (laughs) and the fact that it's called expendable performers i'm just like oh my god like they're working without a net nobody cares Uh, so um this seven mana spell will summon seven one one illidaris with rush and if they all die that turn you summon seven more now i don't really think this is all that great (laughs) but you know i i'm curious to hear your take on it well when demon hunter first was announced and they put out all the cards there seemed to be a token kind of build that never really took off yeah um i i don't know if this makes that viable i don't know if that this makes it like uh you know an archetype but i mean if, if it is this goes in there for sure like you know, 14, 14 board control is seems pretty good. And then, you know, there's other stuff in your hand that gets buffed when people, when things die and, you know, there's, yeah, there's I the guess whole, whole, I was whole thinking, token synergy. I was thinking that they would um, like summon at the end of your turn, but I think oh. I read the, I think I read the card wrong. I think it's like you summon seven and if you can run them all into something, then you'll get seven more. And those ones don't have to die, right? So it, it it's kind of 14-14 of stats in a whole bunch of little 1-1 one, one bodies, but at least they're sure. rushing. I don't know. Yeah, it's it's kind of interesting. And I do think that the um, the token Demon Hunter is definitely a deck that was like almost there, but just never as powerful or more powerful than the other things that Demon Hunter was doing. Like, why would you play token when you can play the eight other ways that demon hunter is better? <laughs> so <laughs> sure. it's like if there was, if the token demon hunter deck was like a shaman deck or a like, Oh, I don't even know a warlock deck, then, you know, it probably would have been top tier, but because it was up against everything else demon hunters can do, it never really went anywhere. Um, except for there was a few times where it was played in um, grandmasters and, and at the, the master store and stuff. But In general, it didn't take off the way some other Demon Hunter builds did. And I feel like this, it's, I think you're more right calling it a control card more than anything else. Like it does give you a whole bunch of tokens, but I feel like by the time you're at seven mana on the token Demon Hunter deck, you have like, you already have stuff on your board and you probably don't need this kind of refill but if you're playing more of a control variant then you're right you could like run seven little illidari dudes into a taunt or something and then get seven more maybe finish clearing up the board and leave yourself with a little bit of board presence and that's never a terrible thing but yeah um i know there's a control demon hunter variant out there but uh i'm not sure if they need this (laughs) Which is kind of what Demon Hunter comes down to. Like, even control versions of the deck are still way faster than most other control variants of other classes. So, yeah, Demon Hunter's good. Who knew? Yeah. Who knew? (laughs) And I feel like I am trying to temper my Demon Hunter hate so hard right now. Like, (laughs) I am dialing it back. (laughs) I'm I'm in your camp, believe me. I've had I've had lots of. Tough times playing against uh, Demon Hunters and said a lot of uh, curse words both on and off stream uh, (laughs) when it comes to playing Demon Hunters. Uh, Yeah, and so we did get one final Demon Hunter card that was revealed today. Uh, So it is probably 
my one of my favorite pieces of art so far. I was gonna say my favorite piece of art, but we're gonna see uh we're gonna see a mage minion in a little bit that is my actual favorite piece of art so far. But uh yeah, this one is definitely up there as well. It's a four mana three three with Rush called Renowned Performer. And it's a demon hunter, like chopping a blood elf in half in one of those like magician box things, except for it doesn't seem to be a, um, you know, successful magic trick, shall we say? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think he, I think the blood elf is getting cut in half. I think that's, that's yeah, the no, point I of the car. <laughs> yeah, the demon hunter is not a very good magician. <laughs> Uh, so yes, this uh, this four minute three three has rush and a death rattle that says uh, summon to one one assistance with taunt. Uh, so I guess it's like the idea is chopping the blood elf in half and then getting two one ones <laughs> in its place. <laughs> yeah, this this card is cool. Uh, again, I think it I think it would go in something like a token deck. Um, mm -hmm. Currently, uh, demon hunter doesn't need this. So I I don't know if it is a good card, uh, but I mean it's cool and not, like you said the artwork is is pretty pretty top tier. Yeah. <laughs> like if you think of a carnival and you think of like you know a show and like a magician and all that kind of stuff and it's like, you know he's supposed to be sawing a a, a, a someone in half, but he's really doing it. So yeah, I think it's I, cool. I think this the art on this is so great and I think you know a, a four mana three three with rush is decent anyway and then the fact that when it dies it gives you two more bodies afterwards with taunt that you can you know stick other things behind um demon hunter has some fairly decent cards in like the five six seven mana slot that you know not a lot of not well some classes but you know, like one, one taunts are just annoying, right? Like you don't want to use your removal. It's like, it could even be two attacks of your bigger stuff, like two little piddly taunts. They're just annoying. <laughs> like you don't want to use it up. It's only one, one minions, right? You don't want to use up your resources to deal with it, but you're kind of going to have to in one way or another, like warrior's going to be like, ah, oh, whatever, fine. You know, whirlwind effect, insert that here. But you know, most other classes are going to be like, oh, man, do I really want to like attack and ping or whatever? Like this is just oh, it's just annoying. So I think this is a good card. I think, you know, I just don't know if Demon Hunter again, these would be good cards in other classes, but I don't know if Demon Hunter needs it. <laughs> yeah, I don't think so. I think I think Demon Hunter is doing fine currently. So I think I think they're going to be OK. I think but, the yeah. other I think the other classes need to catch up. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Uh, so we also had a reveal of a new paladin weapon, which again, I know normally Garrett is like the harping on the art person, but I'm going to harp on this a little bit because, oh man, this is so iconically drain eye paladin. It's amazing. The art on this card is so great. It's like a mace, but with a giant purple crystal as the hammer part of the hammer. Like, yes, <laughs> so much this. Um, it is a six mana three, three. It's called Hammer of the Naru, and its battle cry reads, summon a six, six holy elemental with taunt. So the reason I wanted to talk about this after we talked about um, the craziness that is Ilganoth is because there's a there's a word in here that really caught my eye in a way that I'm like, oh, are we going to get like magic keywords or something like that or ways to interact with things that are different than we're used to? Because I would expect that you would just see, you know, summon a six, six elemental with taunt. But the fact that it says holy elemental, I'm like, hmm. Does this mean that we're going to get some sort of like interacting with the forces of Azeroth in this set somehow? Like, does does that holy elemental mean anything? <laughs> what do you think? Uh, I when I first saw this card, when I first read it, I had I didn't even think about it. But now that you <laughs> mention it, it, that is that is interesting that it says holy elemental, because yeah. if if it if it were just a regular six, six taunt with an elemental tag, why would they add holy elemental to it? You yeah. Know? <laughs> does it mean anything? Like, what does it? Wow. I mean, it's just so it's like it is a six, six elemental taunt like the the um like the the tag at the bottom doesn't change at all. But I'm like, 
Is it just mm. naming the thing? Because we've had things n with names before that have been summoned just with their minion type, you know, like, so I don't know. I feel like the fact that it says holy elemental instead of elemental might be a thing. Maybe sure, it's not even a thing in this. Maybe it's not a thing in this expansion, but maybe that's the way they're going. Who knows? <laughs> <laughs> I choose to read a lot into that personally. Sure. <laughs> but yeah, and so we've got a 3-3 three, three weapon for six mana, which not not great but the fact that you're getting a six six taunt out of that as well in a class that very much wants to be you know um casting spells on minions and like just make it the more minions paladin has on the board right now the happier they are so i feel like this is a decent it isn't it's an epic weapon but i feel like it's a decent insertion potentially into the pure paladin list there's a few there's a few cards in the pure paladin paladin list that aren't great but you just want the pure paladin payoff you know right. of being able to refill your hand with the i forgot her name but the card that gives you six cards back in your hand uh so this could definitely go in there as another paladin card and take out some of the weaker paladin stuff for sure um Vibram paladin is is really good um i i'm i'm pretty sure that's top uh you know tier one as well and yeah, it's um, kind of a toss up, really. I think it depends on what else you're seeing on the ladder. But the the pure paladin and the Libram paladin are fairly close together. There's not really too, too many things in the Libram paladin list that really um, like separate it from the pure paladin. I think there's what, like a wild pyro and a couple of like controlly type things that Libram yeah. is doing. Yeah. Yeah. I, th I think they play broom, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah. The broom. Oh, control. man. Yeah, because I'm like, oh, I'm like, all right, sweet, I got it. And then they're like, all right, I'm going to charge my taunt into you. And I'm like, wow, that that's stinks. <laughs> you not only did you get, not only did you take the board back, you have stuff left over on the board. That's not good for me. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Paladin. <laughs> that stupid room. Uh, yeah. So I, I think that this probably will see some play because, yeah, that, you know, six mana for a six, six with taunt isn't terrible at all. The fact that it's a paladin card and then uh, you've got the three three swings of the weapon on top of it. I, I think that this is a really cool addition to paladin. I like this card. Yeah, it's cool. Uh, next up, we had a rogue card that was introduced. It's a one mana uh, rare minion to uh, two one. And it reads combo deal one damage to a minion for each other card you've played this turn. Uh, it's again one mana to one called a prize plunderer, <laughs> and it's a pirate too. It is a pirate as well, yeah. Um, so you know some potential synergies there, and I mean, Rogue wants to be doing one mana comboy things anyways, just in general. So I mean, this this could end up being quite a large amount of damage or you can play it earlier on and ping off some you know one and two health stuff i feel like there's so many things right now that are just only have two or three health in the early game and you're just like oh man i just can't let that win <laughs> but if you're yeah. you know got something on the if you've got the coin and then another one mana um i got another one mana minion or something like that or like lackeys like all that little pingy stuff and then you just boom prize plunderer and kill their phase stalkers <laughs> or the um oh shoot what's the two health of demon hunter thing the really annoying one that grows when they hit you in the face <laughs> oh yeah uh, that can get out of control so quickly battle fiend? is that what yeah, it is battle, yes thank yeah. you battle fiend yeah yeah um, um I, th I think it's important to note as well that this says each other card you've played this turn because when i yes. first read it i was thinking i was like okay so you coin coin this out and you do two damage and then i'm like wait a minute you can't because there's only yeah, it doesn't one damage. count itself. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> it's it's like it, it, it I guess re rewards you for kind of keeping um you know like lackeys and and smaller stuff that you might nest might normally use for something like an Edwin you know mm -hmm. a big Edwin later on but instead of like okay I don't have Edwin yet but I need to get the board back I need to kill this minion I need to do something you can kind of combo off a little bit and then play this and do three four five maybe damage to something. Mm -hmm. I think it's cool. Um, I don't know if it's worth um, the the body necessarily, but I mean, it, just having Rogue just do damage from hand, I think is kind of cool. Mm -hmm. It's a cool, uh, cool thing. 
Yeah, and I, we should just kind of stress that it is damage to a minion. So this can't be a part of any like crazy kill your face combo or anything. But uh, I think like you mentioned Edwin, I mean, obviously playing a lot of cards in one turn is a thing that Rogue traditionally wants to do that you can usually do with things like coins and backstabs and preps and, you know, all those other kind of things. So there, there's lots of cards you can play in a turn that don't necessarily cost you mana as a Rogue. So... <laughs> Yeah, this card's cool. Uh, we also got some stuff for Hunter, and this actually came out in the um, oh oh my god, I'm totally blanking on it now. The um, animated video guys. I don't know their names, but did did you watch it? I did watch it. It's oh my god, so it's cool! So good. It's so cool. I'm pulling up the launcher right now to see if it's still on there. Uh, okay, it is. I'm going. Hopefully, this doesn't doesn't play. <laughs> Uh, open in that's oh, okay wrong, is it wrong wrong chi oh wrong chi yeah yeah wrong chi yeah, wrong wrong yeah um so they have this super fun i mean if you guys have even if you look for like hearthstone gifts on the internet like the, it's all their characters you know the animation style i know you've seen it they did the first um like community card reveal this uh i guess this expansion this reveal season and it showed us a combo of two hunter cards that were so cool. So first we're gonna talk about the legendary. Uh, it's a six mana four, four named uh, Maxima Blastenheimer. And uh, her- <laughs> What a cool name, dude. Right? <laughs> what a cool name, Blastenheimer. <laughs> and what a fun freaking animation. Uh, Cause we're gonna talk about the, the Tonk in a second, but um, her battle cry reads, summon a minion from your deck. It attacks the enemy hero, then dies. And you're like, oh, OK, automatically I'm getting like death rattly vibes. But normally, wouldn't I want the minion to stick like there's a, why would I want to pull a minion out and just have it die? There's no way there could be something that would make this like super worthwhile. And then they were like, oh, wait a minute. <laughs> They're like, but wait a minute, Joss, we have the perfect card to pair with this. And <laughs> yeah. it is the uh, Dark Moon Tonk, which is a seven mana, eight, five mech with a death rattle that reads fire four missiles at random enemies that deal two damage each. Yeah. So, so, so you're think guaranteed of it like, eight damage to the enemy hero. <laughs> yep. It's and pretty then, good. Yeah. Eight more in random places to your enemies. So if they don't have a board... 16 damage to the enemy hero in one shot because it also it doesn't have to die because the uh, battle cry on uh, Maxima Blastenheimer, the legendary card um, that will actually just kill the minion after it's summoned from your deck. I don't think you ever want to pay the seven mana for the Dark Moon Tonk like. It's OK, I guess, because you've got those um, those missiles firing off after the fact but I mean, if you can cheat it out somehow, like the, we're getting this is like old school recruit kind of vibes. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, it's it's a really cool idea. These cards work really well together. I just don't know because this is in Hunter. So as much as we were, you know, making fun of Demon Hunter earlier because for their terrible card draw, like Hunter legit has some terrible card draw. They've gotten more options now and more targeted draw but those are very much like beast focused. Um, Maxima, I think, is going to have the same. You know what? I don't want to call her that. I'm going to call her Blastenheimer because that's Blastenheimer. cooler. Yeah, yeah, it's much cooler. <laughs> much cooler. Uh, so Blastenheimer, I think, suffers from the same sort of problem that Bran does in that there's no way to easily like tutor it out of your deck except for potentially tracking. But then you may or may not hit it and then it may, you know, end up. You know, you have to get rid of two other things when you're using tracking or depending on how you want to think of tracking. But <laughs> there's some potential drawbacks to tracking. <laughs> so I think that um, she's got that issue. But if you only have her and two Dark Moon Tonks in your deck, I mean, is that a winning hunter deck? I don't know. I don't like probably not. But maybe you just put like a phase stalker or two in and then you just do some secret things and, and do like face leper gnome things and where you're constantly just trying to hit your hero power to thin out your deck. Like maybe there's something there. Maybe this is a cool finishing combo, but 
I don't know. What do you think? Um, I mean, if if you pull this specific this one two combo off, it's incredible. I think doing just straight up eight damage to the to the enemy hero and then eight missile damage, you know, wherever mm -hmm. is is amazing for six mana is amazing. But I mean, like you said, like, are you going to win with just these two minions in your in your deck? I, I don't know. I don't know if um, Hunter can flesh out a deck like that. And you yeah. don't necessarily want to do something like pull out a, a Bran or a Phase Stalker because sure. like Bran's power is the battle cry, right? The Phase Stalker, mm. you want to sit on the board. So it's casting secrets as you use your hero power. Like the really powerful Hunter minions that we would normally be putting in a deck right now, you kind of can't play if you're going for this like one, two punch with Blastenheimer and Dark Moon Tonk. So I think it's cool. I just don't know if this is going to be um, the way that Hunter plays. Um, although they did get a kind of a cool and interesting card uh, called Petting Zoo. And this spell is a three mana hunter spell, rare hunter spell, summon a three, three strider and repeat for each secret you control. So maybe there's some sort of like spell hunter, Blastenheimer finisher hunter deck that could see some play. Sure. I mean, there's, there's definitely ways to make, there's definitely ways in hunter to make minions without having actual minions in your deck. Yeah. Like that's a thing. Um, I don't remember what the deck was, but it had, you know, when Rexar, the hero card was in, yeah. in there, you know, that was the thing. Like just, yeah, the death just knight. spell. <laughs> yeah. Just spell, spell only. Like that was the thing, you know, um, it had a lot of support with, with secrets to um, summon in the, summoning the wolves uh, for each secret you played. Um, that, yeah, you know, that grew, was so. the, um, that was the spell stone. I think yeah, that, yeah, did that. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, so I mean, they, it's definitely been is, done before. Yeah, this, but this is cool. I, I like the hunter deck. Um, I thought it was a lot of fun. Um, obviously, I think uh, the hero card carried that deck, but <laughs> it really um, did because that Rexar hero really gave you an end game, right, and mm -hmm. let you make minions to fill in whatever you needed against whatever deck you were facing. It was just the king of versatility right so <laughs> sure. it was a very very powerful hero and uh yeah i don't really think that we have um kind of the equivalent in hearthstone in standard right now um and i don't think that this um like one two punch of blastenheimer tonk is um is going to be enough to make that deck go but maybe I'm wrong. Maybe there's maybe there's something in Hunter I'm not seeing. But I do think Petting Zoo is is really strong and pushing them in a uh, like spell only secret Hunter type direction. Because I mean, sure. you could go like hero power weapon spell aggression and and kind of top out at the well. Si I was gonna say I'd top out at six mana with Blastenheimer, but you know. Technically, you'd top out at seven, but you never want to play Tonk. <laughs> tonk. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I, I think this is cool because no matter what, it's a three mana, three, three, which mm -hmm. you're getting. Which isn't you, bad. You, yeah. And if you do have a secret, it's a three mana, six, six divided. You know, it's two, which three, three. so much better. <laughs> like, yeah, it just so it good. scales so quickly. It's it's like that that hyena card that rewards you for having a, a secret. You know, it comes down as a three, three and then someone's two, two, twos. Yeah. Right. So. This is similar. I could see something like, you know, coining out a uh, face stalker, turn two hero power, turn three, playing two three threes. Yeah. And having a secret and a face stalker, like, seems pretty good. Yeah. Like, that's, that's <laughs> very quick aggression, board control. And, you know, depending on what secret you get, you know, if it's explosive trap for face or freezing trap for tempo or, you know, misdirection or whatever. Like, it, there's, there's ways to play this. There's ways to build it. I think it's cool. Um, I'm interested to see where, where Hunter goes for sure. Cause there's a lot mm -hmm. of cool stuff Hunter can do right now. Um, yeah. Uh, you know, Highlander, I think is, is, is the most, uh, is the winningest Hunter, but um, you know, there's definitely other stuff you can do. So. Yeah. And cool. we got, uh, we did get one more Hunter card in the reveals that have happened so far uh, called don't feed the animals. It's a two mana legend or sorry, not legendary epic spell. Uh, that says give all beasts in your hand plus one plus one 
corrupt, which is the new keyword for uh, Madness at the Dark Moon Fair. Uh, it says corrupt, give them plus two, plus two instead. So um, this is the two mana spell, which means you need to cast something of three mana or higher out of your hand in order to get the corrupted version of the spell. But um, if you do, then you give all of your beasts in your hand plus two, plus two. Now, I don't think this is great. I'm still not sold. I mean, corrupt in some cases seems to be strong, but I'm not sold on it completely. And the fact that this is hand buffing makes me go, eh, we tried hand buffing, Hunter. Yeah. It's not great. <laughs> it didn't really work. It didn't yeah. really work too much. Um, and especially uh, since it's not give your hand plus one plus one, it's give the beast in your hand yeah, plus one. So it's very specific. Sure. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I don't see this card being very good. Um, I mean, even if you do corrupt it, you're just getting plus one, plus one more in stats, you know? Yeah. And by that time, it's like, I mean, what are you, what are you really trying to do? You know, I, I don't know. Well, cause there's uh they already have, um, pack. Oh man. What's it called? The, the two mana draw beast buff it. Like they oh, uh, pack ingenuity. Is that what it's called? Yeah. A scavenger oh. ingenuity. That's scavenger what it is. ingenuity. Yeah. 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 Uh, so you already have scavenger ingenuity. I'd rather just cast that draw a beast out of my deck and buff yeah. it all in one go instead of, cause I don't really think like right now there is no beast hunter deck out there. That's just all about beasts. And maybe this is trying to give it a little bit more support for what they were um, pushing with the dual class cards with, um, Druid in Skolomance because they had, they were kind of leaning more into, um, like beast synergy type things and it never really went anywhere like hunter went very face very quickly so mm -hmm. um maybe there's something or, or maybe they're trying to shore up that archetype in hunter um that's one thing that we don't have um in this expansion is like the dual class card idea was um skolomance's mechanic basically so we don't have any of those like cross class cards in this expansion so um this is a it's a hunter only card it won't synergize with like it, you can't put it in druid decks <laughs> mm -hmm. so uh yeah it's i don't know i think they're probably trying to push an archetype that maybe just won't get there <laughs> i think i'd be yeah. trying spells before i'd be trying sure. beasts <laughs> i mean they've tried this in the past they've they've tried to make cards for certain archetypes that just straight up don't work um and so, I mean, if there is, if there is a beast hunter, like, sure, this goes in it, but I mean, I don't know. I'm not I, convinced I just, that there is a beast hunter. <laughs> yeah. I, I don't think there is either. I don't, I don't think this card is that good. Yeah. Um, but you know, I'm not a high legend player, so I don't know if I can make <laughs> this work. So, <laughs> but, uh, yeah, n not for me. So now we're going to talk about probably my favorite art so far and i can't even find it where did it go oh there it is okay so we got like this is probably my favorite card art and the most adorable card art in like three or four expansions at this point this thing is so adorable and somehow it got even more adorable in its corrupted form i don't even know how <laughs> they did it but uh, Mage got a four mana spell called Ring Toss, and the art on this card is a turtle with the most adorable happy face ever. And then he's got like the little like Ring Toss target spike on the back of his shell. And then when he gets corrupted, he just gets all kinds of tentacles that get covered in rings. And it's hilarious. Uh, it is a four mana rare mage spell that says discover a secret and cast it. And then it has a corrupted version, like I mentioned, that says discover two instead. So the corrupted version is it's corrupted, discover two secrets and cast them for four mana. Again, mage spell. I don't think this makes it in decks, but I think that with all of the random generation, we're going to see this card a lot. Oh, yeah, for sure. Mage is, mage is definitely going to come across this card in one way or another. And there's going to be times where this, this card beats you and you're going to be like, so upset that they got <laughs> flame ward from this and you're like the one secret they got from a randomly generated thing like it's gonna make you salty but this card is this card is cool i really really 
really like this uh, this card uh, idea because it's more expensive than an actual secret, but gives you access to more uh, conditional secrets, I guess, you know, whereas like you might want something like um, uh, Ice Barrier where, uh, you know, you wouldn't want you wouldn't that in necessarily deck. put that in your deck. Yeah, exactly. But like you're like, oh, I need I need more healing. I need something or I need to play more to wipe the board. I need this, you know, so I think it's cool. I think you're right. I don't think it just straight up goes in a deck, but if this does get corrupted, getting two secrets for four mana is is excellent. That's a a really really good uh, good card. It is, and but good again, art. like it's the it's the idea that in order to corrupt it, you have to play something more expensive first. Means that like you're never going to be able to go like turn three secret into turn four, discover two secrets type of a crazy swing and. Correct me if I'm wrong, but it doesn't say discover two mage secrets, because I think if it said discover two mage secrets, then I'd be like, damn, this is ridiculous. But because oh. it says discover two secrets, that makes me think that you're going to have like one and two mana, like paladin and oh. hunter stuff mixed in oh. and rogue actually, too, which I always forget rogue has secrets now. But like those are all going to be in the pool, too. Right. So you're not guaranteed two three mana mage secrets so yeah. then that makes me kind of go oh I, what the, like i'm gonna get okay. two pair of the terrible paladin secrets yeah. and then okay. i'm gonna cry <laughs> sure this this just made the card worse for me now that you pointed that out i i just assumed it was mage secrets but it, it i did it with the first time that. i read it too because then i was thinking okay getting two secret discovering two secrets and casting them for four mana when your secrets cost three mana and the mage secrets are so powerful like that would be insanely good but then i'm just like ah oh, but also what if i get three terrible options from the gajillion secrets that are in the game now I don't know if this is I don't know if this is if this is actually good. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even think about that. You're, you're right. The fact that it doesn't specifically it doesn't say mage, specify secrets, mage. Yeah. Yeah. Which I don't know if it's actually like um, if did they take away the weighting of the class out of discover? Um, or did they just uh, tone it down? I can't remember. Exactly, because if this is still slightly weighted towards mage secrets, then there's probably math that can be done to tell you if this is good or not. But just the fact that there are those other secrets in the pool, um, you're not necessarily like, I mean, you could be potentially casting four mana to get two mana's worth or three mana's worth of secrets, right? Sure, so, yeah. If it's if it's two paladin secrets, yeah, it's two one mana secrets, like that's not that's good at all. Bad. <laughs> yeah, OK, uh, yeah, this this I, I have no idea. Why no did idea. they make the cute cards not amazing? <laughs> like, <laughs> you need to pump up the power of the cuteness, guys. Come on. <laughs> did you see its eyes on the corrupted version yes, of it? Yes, on the, on the eye stalks, and they're all wiggly. <laughs> yeah, it's incredible. <laughs> it's great, great yeah. card art. Yeah, it's so good. I love it so much. And and just like his big happy face, he's sticking out his tongue in the original version before he gets grabbed. He's like, ah! <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. I just, I love both versions of this card. It's the greatest. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think it's the playable list. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, finally, the last card that we had uh, revealed today is a Warlock card. It's a three mana, three, three. It's an epic it's called the Revenant Rascal with the battle cry that reads, uh, destroy a mana crystal for both players, which I don't know. This seems like maybe like anti-Druid. Like if somebody's just had a real bad day and they're like, I just, I just hate Druid. I just want to screw you up. I'm just going to play this. I know it, it hurts me too. I understand. I don't even care. <laughs> Take that. Yeah, I, think, <laughs> I think of all the cards I've seen today, I, I think this is my favorite. Yeah. Um, just because if you look at something like like a, a cult neophyte, right, where like you're counting on, you know, your big turns to do, you know, whatever it is you're going to do. You're like, OK, I have the six mana spell next turn. I'm going to cast it and it's, it's going to swing in my favor. You play cult neophyte and it and it just you get wrecked. But this is counts for minions and spells. So it just sets you back completely. So it doesn't just target something like. All right, your spells cost one more. It's like, boom, like you have one less crystal to work with. When you thought 
you were having, you know, a certain amount. So I it's think it's very something disruptive, like, a, like in a really yeah, it's, cool it's, and interesting way. Yeah, it's a, it's amazing. I, I think it's called rules. Um, I I don't know if it's like, you know, amazing, uh, but I, I think it's cool. I think it's going to be played. I think it's going to be in a zoo deck for sure. Like, I was, yeah, you know, zoo jumps to my mind, too, because uh, zoo is the warlock deck that kind of cares the least about their mana crystals. It has sure. a lot of smaller stuff that does well when you just have bodies on the board. So I feel like, uh, yeah, this is definitely something uh, that would go into a zoo deck and then you know depending on um how important like disruption of mana and turns and tempo and stuff kind of becomes in the madness meta then i think this card could absolutely see a lot more play yeah i just i think cards like that are just so so skill intensive to know when the right exact moment to play them are you know, yeah like it's very much card- rewards understanding of the meta and what your opponent is trying to do yeah, and that's why I think this card is so cool because there's going to be times where it, it bl- you get blown out by it where you're like, okay, I'm counting on this next turn to play like a Guardian Animals and I come back and I I draw two cards and this and this and then then you're then you can't do it and you're like, oh my god, like what do I do now? Like I'm so f- this just throws me off and mm-hmm. I think cards like that are so cool. Like I've always loved, you know, uh. Just just cards that mess with other people, like other people's stuff, like other people's plans, like Dirty Rat was one of my OG like favorite mm-hmm. cards, like just breaking up their combos. And I mean, Lotheb I... always comes up. Exactly, right? yeah. exactly. <laughs> Lotheb, like there are so many times you're like, OK, cool. And then Lotheb comes down, you're like, wow, I can't I can't do anything this turn. It's crazy. So <laughs> they just turned off my entire hand. <laughs> yeah, I think I think this card's cool. This is my favorite card of, of the day that yeah. got released for sure. Yeah, I think it's uh, it's definitely interesting. And and I like again, like this, this to me falls under the umbrella of um, tech cards done right, where they're they're interesting, they're skill intensive, and it isn't a totally ridiculous swing like the crabs, right? Like you don't gain a bajillion stats for destroying, like destroy a mana crystal and gain plus two <laughs> plus two. Like, <laughs> yeah, that'd be nuts, dude. yeah, like it just, it just straight up is like, Hey, I'm a uh, three mana three, three, but I do this really cool thing that can disrupt your, disrupt your opponent. And maybe, you know, you don't really care about the negative effect very much because if you are, um, Well, yeah, I guess you are. Then you're setting yourself back for one mana the whole time. So, um, but yeah, I I think it's really cool. And uh, I've been fairly excited by what we've seen so far in terms of uh, cards from this expansion. And I'm looking forward to seeing like we've got such a condensed release schedule um, because the, the expansion is coming out so soon so yeah like next week i think it's just gonna be me and garrett just talking about cards forever (laughs) yeah you're gonna you're gonna have a long episode next week we're gonna have yeah so there's 135 cards coming out in this expansion and so far we have 25 which means we're gonna have 110 cards to talk about next week guys i'm telling you right now it's not gonna happen (laughs) we are going to cherry pick next week so hard but yeah, there's um, going to be there's going to be a few duds that don't even bother yeah, talking yeah. about for exactly. sure. Exactly. But uh, yeah, then they throw things at me like Ilganoth and they're like, your lifesteal doesn't lifesteal. I'm like, what? Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah, I think uh, this expansion is shaping up to be really interesting. We've got a lot of reveals coming down the pipeline. So, uh, yeah, stay tuned for that. You can subscribe to The Angry Chicken on all your favorite podcast apps like Spotify, Google Play and iTunes. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell so you don't miss another Angry Chicken video.